Hi, this is Verda McDougall associated with VMAC Queen. I'm talking to Natasha today about being a mom and how she raised her children up. Um, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I just wanted to know what were some uh, what were some of the um things that you've done with your children, raising them, and um, you know, just as a mom, how how did you handle being a single mom? Were you a single mom? Yes, I've always been a single mom. So how how did you handle being a single mom and um taking care of your children? Were they boys or girls? One daughter. One daughter. Okay. And I don't know if you all know, but I think the girls are worse. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> yes, I really do. So how how did you handle being a single mom with one daughter? Um. Pretty much the help from my family was the, the, the best thing that I had. Um, without them, without my mother and my sisters, um, I didn't have anyone. Of course, I was a single mom, really couldn't afford to pay for daycare. So my mom and my sister, they always kept my daughter for me while I, you know, so I could work. And they understood. Um, and it was a good thing because I had backup. I had the, the upbringing. My daughter coming up the same way I did. It was rude. Um, in the household, there were chores that you had to do. And as a single mom, I don't, I don't think, I'm not going to say that it's not possible, but with that extra support from the family that you have to instill those things in them, um, that, that's a big help. Yes, it is. I, I know. Um, my mom passed when I was 23, pregnant with my third child, and she was a really big help. But after she passed, uh, you know, it was a struggle. It was really mm -hmm. a struggle. So having that extra help, I know, I know that it's good. And um, so and then didn't you decide to go back to college after you had your daughter when she was a little older? Yes, I think I went back to college the first time, and I'm going to say the first time because after the first time, I I really realized what was required for me to go to college. Now, I, I think I didn't understand what was required for me. It's the first time that I went. I think I was 20, about 28 or 29. My daughter was about 8 or 9. And uh, I decided I'd go to school, and I was just going to get an associate's degree. And I stopped doing that, and that was probably roughly 2003, 2000, 2003, 2004. Uh-huh. And I decided finally, you know, I, I'm a believer that Satan happens for a reason. God has everything in his plan for you. And I don't think it was in his plan at that time for me to do that because I had a job that I was stable in. I loved it. And all of a sudden, I got fired. Oh, and that sparked the motivation in me to do what I needed to do to really compete in the job market. Yeah. to be serious about competing in the job market. And that day, I decided I would go back to school. I finished my associate's degree within a year because I didn't have many classes left. I decided I was going to finish my bachelor's degree, and I finished my bachelor's degree in another year and a half. And here it is another year and a half later, and this two, uh, December of next, next month, I'll be finishing my master's degree. So... And, and when he's ready for you, he will give it to you. And you just have to be there to accept it. And I accepted it. And I'm so happy I did. Yes, yes. Because we have to follow his plan. Because it's never our plan. But we, we always try to make it our plan. And what I, what I want to know is what advice would you give to the younger generation coming up now as single moms trying to make it out here? What, what kind of advice would you give them? I think the very first thing you have to do is believe that you can do it. Because if you don't believe it, nobody else will. No. And you have to have that fortitude to drive for it and to make sure that you not just think about these things but put these things into motion. So you have to be active and you have to be proactive in making sure that you do these things that if you can't achieve. The second thing is you can't ever allow someone to tell you that you can't do it. 
because that will bring you down faster than anything. So no, so so, so for them. I think those are the two, the two, mo the two most important things: to believe in yourself and don't let anyone tell you that you you can't do it. I think with those two things, those two foundation things, everything else will fall will fall into place. I mean, I'm. Um, and just stick with it, and you have to continue uh, to have that drive that you had in the beginning. You just have to go with the momentum and make sure you see see through everything that you you uh, try to accomplish. All right, so that's some good advice for the young ladies coming up today. And um, I thank you for giving me your time today. And I just would like to know if you would like to do a prayer with me today. I would love to. All right. Are you going to pray? Or am I going to pray with you on? You can, this is not my strong suit, but I will, I will make you a tip. Be oh. ever you ready. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what the Bible say. Be ever ready. That's right. So we ready. Now, there's just two of us here. We come here as humble as possible, trying to make an effort in this community. Trying to outreach, give outreach to those that are in need, those who need to hear the word. We just ask that you are with us in this struggle. And when you give further the strength that it takes to make sure that she succeeds in her plan. Yes, Lord. Everything we know is up to you, and you are the master planner. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I thank you so much for being a part of this, and I really appreciate you. I really do. Thank you so much. No, thank you for having me. All right. So that'll be all, people. Thank you for listening.